this is just a quick tip here. A little background, I was a contractor here in New Mexico, general contractor for about 20 years. Did quite a bit of framing, learned a few tricks. I was never like the, the best framer in the world or anything like that, not claiming to be. But I did learn some tricks from guys that were very good. So this board is a piece of pressure treated two by eight. It is going to be the board that's against the concrete for the wall I'm building. Um, you saw me rip out the center here. And the reason I've done that is this is gonna be a, there's gonna be a pocket door, which is a door that slides inside the wall. This length here that opens into that other room. I didn't want a door that swings because that eats up floor space and I didn't want a door. I originally thought I was gonna do a door on the outside like a big barn door, but my, I was, I'm gonna lose wall space to do that. So you have the hole already and then wherever that door goes, you lose that much more space. So if it's on the outside or the inside, you're losing that wall space. So by doing a pocket door, it does cost a little more because the door kit's you know, not cheap. You, you could probably build your own for under $100. You buy one, it's about $200, 250 which is the way I went, because I don't I have more time to do some, some of the other stuff than build a pocket door kit. Um, but you need a gap all the way to the concrete for the door to slide into. You could shorten the door and let it ride right over the top of this, but then you've got an inch and a half gap under the door, maybe two inches when the door is closed, or when the door is fully closed, you have a big air gap under there. So the reason I did this and the reason that piece is still in there is I've cut all the way through on the lengths. On the ends, I've cut about three, you know, about half an inch down and half an inch up on the corners. And then up here, this board is going to get cut off, but by leaving this on here as I nail to this, everything stays straight. And I've cut about three quarters of the way through the board up here, all the way across. What that's going to do is once I, I, I have a full board to work with, it's, you know, there's a little flex in it, but it's not like it would be if it was just two long, two inch wide strips up here. And, there, and because wood tends, you know, we don't ever kiln dry it or anything that we're using in, in framing. So the, the lumber tends to want to go different ways. If you, if I was to cut that completely loose, I'd have two pieces wandering off. So this keeps everything organized. I have all my lines still. Then once this is down and it's all nailed down, all the framing's done, all I got to do is come in here with either a sawzall or one of those end cutter saws. Um, I have one of those as well. And just finish cutting out the two little ends, cut this side off, and the whole piece comes out completely done. So that's the trick. Leave it in there. Cut as much as you need to to make it easy to get it out when you're done framing, but leave as much as you can for the mass. Welcome back to Allison Customs. Over the last few minutes, you've seen me framing up all of this uh, wall structure, and I'm beginning to get the uh, beams in place for a balcony that's going to be storage area up there. This room back here in the corner is going to end up being my wood shop. Keep my table saws and radial arm saws, that type of stuff back there. I think I've talked about that in other videos in the past, but uh, it's kind of coming together now. Um, I mentioned I'm putting a pocket door in here, so that's why this wall is a 2x8. A, to give me the width for the door I want, and B, uh, to give me enough mass of wood to hold up, you know, as far as, as the uh, studs and everything, to hold up the floor above it. So it needed to be a fairly thick wall to be able to take out the uh, 3 inches or so I need for the door. 
Um, up here we've got a steel beam going all the way across and they shipped me a 25 foot 3 inch beam and it needs to be cut down to 24 7 so I'm getting ready to get the plasma cutter out. Cut the beam off, put a 45 on it to match the wall down here. Um, you see I've added a piece of tubing to my uh, engine lift. The beam weighs uh, about 550-ish pounds. It'll be a little lighter than that once I cut the end off. So I've already put it up here, extended it, and marked about how high I need uh, where I can wrap a chain on it and grab this beam in the center. The idea is I'm going to pick it up, set it up there, and then set the beam down exactly where I need it. We'll see how smoothly that goes. I also need to cut some 3 8 inch bolt holes in the bottom of the beam and in the top so that I can tie the beam to this 2x6. The 2x6 isn't there for structure, it's there so I can have a nice finished edge. Steel beam will actually be supporting the 2x8, I said 2x6, 2x8 that's there. Additionally, I want to be able to bolt the 2x8 that will be above it all, the, the top plate, to the top of the beam so that when I put my floor joists on, that, that 2x8 is locked in place. And normally you would, like on a wood structure, you would just nail those down on this two, on this I-beam. I'm going to have to bolt it down. I'll, I'll kind of come back later with a camera and show you some places that I've got to add some more studs. Some of you have probably already spotted them. But uh, basically, I was trying to, I was running low on material, so I was trying to get as much up as I could. And then I made a run and got a little bit more material this morning. If I have time, I may try and make another run. Uh, to a regular lumber yard tomorrow, but we'll see if that works out. But in the meantime, this is what we've got. This is what I'm doing. The goal is to get the balcony up there. I may run out of funds before I get to all the flooring uh, this week, but you know, next month or the month after, I'll have saved up some more money and can try. You know, can do the next step.
uh, kind of been a long week. I've been getting a lot of this framing done and top plates on, walls are built, and I'm kind of at a point where I need to get some more wiring and some airlines in the walls before I really go any further. So I'm going to take you around real quick and show you a few of the uh, little details that I had to do after getting all the walls built, maybe one or two of stuff that I still need to do. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the uh, 10 or 12 minutes of all of this. And it took me about four days to get what you'll see done. The beam up there weighed about 550 pounds. And that was probably not the hardest part of it. Uh, actually, it, was, it wasn't very hard at all. The engine lift did all the work, but the uh, maybe the sketchiest part of what I did. So you can see the mess I've made in the place. I've got lumber everywhere, sawdust all over my scout, um, stuff laying, hoses and cords. It's really not a safe work environment, really. Um, but I did get the uh, walls up, the beam. Started getting a little sheeting in here. See there. I um, was able to get this one sheet on the wall, but I need to run uh, some coax into that box for uh, I want to put my TV up here on these braces and then uh, need to put some staples in here to lock the wire down still missing a couple boxes and just see where I looped the, the wire in and then uh, from this last one here where there needs to be a box that'll go then to the home run to the uh, to the breaker box and then I've got boxes on this other wall and those will start a second run that will then also go to the uh, breaker box. Uh, I plan to put my lathe mill out here. So I've got the breakers over, or the uh, outlet over there on the left. I want to get some air in this wall. And then uh, another outlet over on this side. And I added a, a light that will be controlled off of a switch right there um, off that same box. So all of that's coming along. Just going to take a little more time. Um, over here I got the uh, center section like I was showing you guys earlier got that center section all cut out after the wall was framed and I've got my anchor bolts in there now locking everything down see that on there um, so the wall has anchor bolts uh, I do need to put some kind of shim in there because somehow or another I managed to measure that two by eight off by a quarter of an inch. So you need to shim that up so it actually does something. And then kind of hidden behind that steel leaning there is uh, my sub panel breaker box. So I've got to run power from the main breaker box over here to this one. But uh, coming along, uh, it'll probably be a couple more weeks, a uh, month before I have time and funds again to uh, try and do the actual balcony itself so the floor that goes above all of this but by then i should have the electrical and the plumbing for the air and all that in so once i get started it'll be pretty just straightforward run so that's it for now my shop's a giant mess but kind of get the walls covered up and get all this stuff put back into a relatively where I want it. Uh, actually, you can see right there, that's all the scrap I have left right now. I've been calling through it every time I need small stuff, so it'll it'll dwindle down a little more anyway, yet. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you again next week with probably something more car related. Thanks for watching Allison Customs Project Car TV. Like us on Facebook and check us out at allisoncustomsonline.com.